morning. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video, uh, but Xavier, one of my graduates from my program several years ago, has contacted me and asked me to do a video on uh, basic troubleshooting of a motor circuit on the power side um, for a three-phase motor. So that's what we're going to cover this morning. Uh, first thing I want to do is orient you to the drawing. This is a 480 volt AC three phase system, leg one, leg two, and leg three. This is your motor contactor, the, the high voltage contacts. This is your overload, which is a thermal overload. And this is your squirrel cage motor with your terminal one, terminal two, and terminal three uh, on the motor. And this is not gonna make a difference whether it's a nine lead or a 12 lead or anything like that. These are just, a, that's where your power terminates into the motor itself, okay? <laughs> um, I will say when you're troubleshooting a motor, the first thing is, is check your overcurrent devices, period. Um, check your overloads. Uh, there's a little reset button, and on that reset button, it, it can be turned to A or H. A means it's automatic, and that doesn't happen, you don't have that too often in uh, automotive or excuse me, in manufacturing, because anything that an, that an operator inter, interacts with the machine, it should not automatically restart after there's a fault. So those get put on H, which stands for hand, which means you gotta manually reset that. And that's gonna be a, a maintenance guy, a technician, uh, somebody of that sort is gonna have to come and open the cabinet, go in and see what the fault is, okay? Um, but if you have a motor that has stopped running, Overloads are the first thing you check. Next thing you want to check are your circuit breakers uh, and your fuses. And anytime you have those kind of things to check, you want to find out what's the why did this thing do this? Uh, it, those things trip to protect the, the machinery. Now, one of the things that you can do is using uh, your multimeter is you put the multimeter on your ohms check, okay? You don't want to put it on on your tone check, because if there's more than 100 ohms of resistance, you won't get that tone. And if you're just listening and you're not looking, it'll give you the, the ohms resistance, but if it's more than 100 ohms, you won't hear the tone, okay? Um, but so put it on, on your ohms resistance. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna check with your meter, you're gonna check from the contactor that's open right now, you're gonna check from each one of those phases to ground. And there should not be any any uh, resistance to ground. If you've got resistance to ground, you, you've got a short somewhere. And now the process is you trying to figure out what that is, okay? Uh, most guys, I'll tell you, they don't do that. They just hit the reset button and send it, you know? And uh, if the, re the overload trips again, that's telling you you have, definitely have an issue with what's going on. But if you check, from ground to each phase on the open side, not the voltage side, for a resistance check, you should get an, a, a, an open circuit. You should not have any kind of resistance to ground. If you do, there is a short, and whatever phase that's in is the problem, okay? Um, and the next thing that you can do is, some overloads trip for two reasons. They trip for direct short, which is instantaneously. They, they open immediately. Uh, in milliseconds. Or the next one that will do that is a, a motor overload where the motor is just working too doggone hard. It gets to a certain point. These thermal overloads right here will overheat. They're bimetallic and one side uh, expands faster than the other and it trips that. The indication of that is typically you cannot, if you're standing right there when it trips, you go to hit the reset button, it won't reset. Because the bimetallic strips, they have to cool off to come back to their original position. Okay, then they will allow you to reset. If it trips right there in front of you and you can reset that and it resets, you've got a short somewhere. Okay, because the, the bimetallic strip never got a chance to open because there's two mechanisms inside of this uh, overload right here. Um, and I won't go into details on that because uh, it'll make this video too long. Okay, um, so if you reset this and it turns back on, the next thing you want to do is you want to get your clamp meter. And I apologize, this is not my fluke that I use at work. This is an automotive, but it's to represent, okay? So what you want to do is you want to take this clamp meter and you want to go over each one of these phases. And each one of those phases should have the same current. And it may be off, you know, a, a couple of hundred milliamps, 
Um, but they should be about the same. If they're four amps on the first one, you should be getting four amps nominal across each one of those other two uh, currents. If you've got two that are really, really, that are, let me just, I won't say really high, but you got two that are pulling four amps and you got one that's pulling nothing, um, you'll probably have a nominal uh, current of, of like an amp, but those two have to pull the, the work that the other phase that you've lost is uh, is not doing, okay? So, and that's single phasing. Um, and then the next piece is, is to find out why is it single phasing, okay? Because it can, it can be an issue here with the motor or it can be an issue farther down the line. You could have bad contact here, this contact, the actual contact points could be, could be bad in that. Um, you could have lost a fuse uh, farther up in the line on that circuit. And uh, so you only have one, or excuse me, two phases that are pulling. But when you check your, your amp meter, okay, and you check on each one of these phases, those phase, the current draw on that, you should see that they should be consistently, if it's five amps, it, sh it might be 5.1, 5 the next one might be 5.2, the next one might be 4.9, but they should all be right there. And there's an exception. If you have a motor that has an electric brake, you're going to have two phases that will have higher current than the other one will because that brake is operating off of two phases of that, uh, of that three phase motor. So that out of, you know, two current, you know, current higher, but that's going to be, you know, a minimal, uh, it might be an amp. It might be an amp and a half or something like that, but it's not going to be something that's really significant, uh, to cause that. Okay. Um, so you can check your resistance to ground, uh, this contactor has to be open. Do not check on this side because that's the voltage side. But this side with these open, this side should be dead. Uh, check it with your voltmeter first. Ensure that it, there's no voltage on it. And then go to your own setting and go and check uh, your resistance to ground on each one of those phases. Should be zero. Okay. Um, if, if you have um, resistance to ground... Come down here to the pecker head and disconnect the wires at the pecker head because if the if the short is inside the motor, um, you're gonna have that'll isolate that. You know if you disconnect all three of these wires over here and you go back up here and you check your resistance to ground and that's gone away, then it's gonna be inside the motor. That motor is what's causing the problem, which is I would say a good part of the time that's what it's gonna be anyways. Okay. Now, another test that you can do with your multimeter, <laughs> you put it on AC volts, okay? And what you're gonna do is a voltage drop test. You're gonna do that voltage drop across the contactors, okay? And this is while it's energized. And you're gonna see if this is 480, you should, you should, you might see 16 volts or something like that going across there. But if it's a good contact, you're gonna see very, very low voltage. If the contact is bad, let's say across this one we see uh, a low voltage, say around 16 volts, that's the voltage drop. And then we see this one over here and we've got like nothing and nothing. That's telling us those contacts are good and the one with 16 volts drop, there's more resistance there and it's it's uh, losing that. But that test you can do without having to shut the, shut the machine off if the machine is running, okay? Because sometimes when we turn the machine off, we clear a fault out. I mean, we do that all the time. Uh, where you do a hard hard restart to try and clear a fault. And uh, if you're trying to troubleshoot, you don't want to do that. And it's less uh, invasive to the machine. You're not going to mess up a process or anything like that. Okay. And I wish I had a live circuit here that I could show you this. Um, but uh, the voltage drop check uh, can work for you uh, here also. And you, you also want to do that down here. Uh, It'd be difficult to do at the at the uh, motor itself. Um, most of the time, you, you're either doing with one of two things: either uh, wire nuts. Uh, sometimes you're seeing these Wago clips that are coming out nowadays that are getting more popular, or you got a terminal block with uh, like nine thirty seconds nuts that are holding everything together. Okay, especially if you got European uh, built motors. Okay, um, but the voltage across here, you can also check your voltage from the hot side from your load side and check from your T side voltage to ground. If you get 277 here and then on this side over here, you get, you know, 100, you got a bad set of contacts, you know, that are, that contact might be, is, is going to be bad. And that happens every time those contacts 
not when they make, it's when they break. And you see that flash inside the, uh, inside the contactor, that's pitting those contacts each time that does that. And usually when it's a one, every once in a while, it's not an issue. But if you got somebody over there that's constantly hitting the stop and, and uh, start button, that'll, that'll uh, destroy those contacts, okay? So what do we do? First thing we check is overloads and any other overcurrent protection. Next thing we want to do with this part of the motor de, uh, circuit de-energized, check our volt, check for a resistance to ground. We should have lip, we shouldn't have anything. Okay. Um, the next one to do is use our clamp meter and check if we turn this thing back on, we're going to check each one of our phases for our current draw and they should be the same unless they've got, you've got a, uh, uh, electric brake, uh, on that motor, okay? Then you can check your voltage drop going across your contactors to see if this has happened. Because if you got low voltage on that, it's gonna put higher current uh, on, on, that, uh, on that leg, okay? Um, and that, if that has not answered anybody's questions, please put comments uh, down here in the comment section and I will clarify uh, anything, okay? So, Everybody be safe out there. And when I say be safe, I'm not talking about going to your safe space. I'm just talking about you using your PPE and doing the right thing. And uh, make sure you stay safe and go home uh, to whoever your significant other is. Okay? Later.